Can you define that in a way that doctors can understand that if they were taking a history of ultra processed food exposure? Yeah, so it's interesting right now, you know, that's, I think it's interesting when you think back of the evolution of all of these different, you know, phases that we've gone through in terms of, you know, the field. In the beginning, it was, you know, is food addictive? How do we define it as being an addictive substance, right? So many years are, were spent kind of characterizing, you know, the addiction piece. And I think that, you know, after the papers that have been published were became very apparent that, yes, it can be addictive. Then the question became, okay, well, what, what's the next question? So it's now it's what is ultra processed food? And I think, you know, there's a lot of debate about how to kind of characterize foods. One of the things that I think is the most clear definition is from Carlos Monteiro's work in Brazil. He's developed the NOVA classification. And that is really, you know, one of the, I think, better ways to kind of characterize ultra processed foods. So it's really, you know, we have a one spectrum ultra processed foods, but then we have, you know, food ingredients like butter, for example, that are processed, but they're, you know, not to the extent that some of the ultra processed foods are like, you know, chips and many of these sort of convenience foods that you'll see in, you know, gas stations and at the checkout counter. And then really just basic ingredients, right? Like, you know, salts and, you know, things like that. Given that evolution and the fact that there's 30 years of data, um, when does food or sugar or fructose corn syrup or ultra processed foods make it into the DSM? 